Hi. In my previous video, I did a teardown of this uh, Keithley 775A Pro Ample frequency counter. And if you recall, when I measured against my rubidium frequency standard, the measure frequency was a bit off, and I wasn't able to adjust the TCXO to get rid of the error. And the most probable cause of this behavior is, for whatever reason, the crystal oscillator inside the TCXO had drifted beyond the correctable range. So I decided to take a look inside the temperature compensated crystal oscillator to see if I could repair and modify it to make it in spec again. Given the vintage of the TCXO, I think that it was probably made of discrete components, so it would be easier to repair. I had repaired the OCXO in my HP8530B microwave frequency counter before, and I will put a link below for those who were interested. Anyway, this particular TCXO is uh, weld shut, and the only way I could open it was to use a Dremel to cut off the welded base. And that's exactly what I did. I wasn't too worried about uh, accidentally damaging the TCXO, as I could easily replace it with an off-the-shelf TCXO, since the TCXO portion of the circuit is readily available in the service manual. So, here are a couple of pictures of the TCXO circuit board when it was just removed from the case, and to get access to the circuit, I had to desolder the four pins from the base. So just to show you what I've got so far, basically I took off the board and you can see that uh, the TCXO has been desoldered from the circuit board here. And as you can see here, what I did to the actual TCXO enclosure, basically I had to uh, cut it off from the bottom and using a Dremel to carefully cut off the uh, uh, along the seams, welded seams here. And uh, after it was first came out, um, this was actually soldered onto the, the board like that. And uh, I of course desoldered this and I attached some wires. So this is the ground, this is the uh, positive 12 volts, and this is the uh, frequency, out frequency output. So let's power it up and uh, see what we've got. And I just powered it up using the bench power supply. And as you can see back there, I had it set to 12 volts. Right now it's just drawing about uh, five milliamps. And uh, so everything is powered up. And you can see that uh, the output here, I am taking the output directly to the Recodana 1992 frequency counter up there. I did not bring it down because it's such a hassle to bring it down, but uh, you can actually just see it from this angle here. So um, let me just uh, make it stable here. So now you can see that it's reading uh, right above 10 megahertz. And if you recall, our measured signal, uh, when we were measuring the, uh, the 10 megahertz uh, time base, that the measured signal was uh, less than 10 megahertz. This makes perfect sense as uh, because we are using this timer as the time reference. So uh, the higher the frequency, the lower our measured frequency is. And we can trim the output frequency by adjusting this uh, uh, trimmer capacitor here. And uh, the problem is that uh, this capacitor uh, has a limited trimming frequency range and we were only able to adjust a few hertz at the maximum, which uh, is specified by the, this uh, OCXO, sorry, this TCXO. And as you can see here, we were able to set the output fre frequency range by 4.7 hertz. So that's its uh, design parameters. Unfortunately, because right now we are so far off the, um, the 10 megahertz baseline, and in fact, it's, uh, let's see, it's about, uh, uh, almost two kilohertz off, right? So we cannot adjust this uh, to set it back to within the uh, 10 megahertz range. So we have to, to do something different. So I think the reason that uh, this TCXO cannot be adjusted back to its uh, specified range is some of the components, especially the uh, crystal oscillator here, has significantly aged. And uh, so the, the oscillating frequency, the resonant frequency, drifted uh, somewhat. 
And also, it may also be that some part of the circuit uh, depends on the parameters of these uh, transistors and the capacitors had drifted uh, out of the range. But uh, uh, when you look at the construction, is everything is uh, discrete. So we should be able to uh, modify some of the component value to get it back uh, in range again. At least that's a theory. Or alternatively, we could find a, a suitable uh, 10 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator and uh, replace this with it. But um, this looks like it's kind of a special uh, crystal oscillator and at least I don't have any one of uh, this size. The modern ones are all smaller. So my feeling is that if I can uh, fix this as uh, is, then I'm definitely going to keep this in place. Typically a crystal oscillator's oscillating frequency or the resonant frequency can be adjusted slightly via a uh, capacitance in parallel or in series. So I think we, sh we should be able to uh, add additional capacitance to, the, uh, to one of the leads here and I will, uh, I will test which one is which but uh, we should be able to do that and uh, affect the output frequency. So let me go ahead and uh, add a trimmer capacitor here and uh, to one of the leads and see what we got. And I just soldered on this uh, uh, trimmer cap and uh, this is a 60 picofarad one. Uh, but basically I put one on the this lead of the, uh, the crystal oscillator and the other one I uh, grounded it. So this one actually I just used the, uh, the lead from a resistor here and this one is actually connected to the ground. So as you can see in the back here. And so now in theory, we should be able to adjust this. And right now I just powered it up. As you can see that we are actually seeing lower uh, frequency value than before. So now we're seeing still 800 uh, also odd Hertz off. So let, let me start uh, tweaking, uh, adjusting this uh, trim cap. And uh, now you can see we can, uh, the frequency started dropping. And by the way, the fan of the uh, power supply just uh, kicked off. So now you can see that we have a very wide range of adjustment. Now we, let's keep adjusting the, uh, the trim pot that we just placed on so that we get a nice 10 megahertz uh, reading. We might not be able to get exactly 10 megahertz, um, but, once it's uh, stabilized, uh, we want to make sure that we let it sit there for a while so that uh, the whole thing gets uh, stabilized. Then, then we should be able to use the original trimmer capacitor to adjust the frequency uh, above and below 10 megahertz. Let's try that out. So after adjusting both trimmers back and forth, and I think I reached a point where uh, I think this is probably the best I can get. Now you can see that we are a little bit off, uh, but the main trimmer, which is the trimmer that we originally have on this uh, uh, TCXO. So let me just show you here. So basically the main trimmer, which is uh, this one here. So I am left it at a place where it's a right in the middle, so which means I can adjust it downwards and upwards uh, on both ends. So I think uh, right now at least I can adjust it to be just below 10 megahertz and just above 10 megahertz. So I think we're in a perfect uh, spot. And uh, now I'm going to uh, put this uh, OCXO, uh, TCXO board back into the case and uh, solder it onto the board and we'll see what we've got as the final result. And before we put it back into the case, let's just take another look. Right now we're at just above uh, 10 megahertz, so which is pretty good. And uh, now I'm going to solder this whole thing back on and uh, hopefully everything will just work. Now check this out. After I reassembled the TCXO board and let the unit warmed up for about an hour, the frequency measurement had stabilized, and I'm right now measuring the same 10 MHz rubidium frequency standard, and it's only about 20 Hz out, which is much better than before. 
I guess I should have waited a little bit longer when I initially did the course adjustment when I had the board disassembled because after I put everything back I realized that I probably didn't let it power on long enough to uh, get to a stable frequency and now after I reassembled everything and waited till everything is stabilized the I realized that the frequency is again above a few hertz adjustment range that I could make using the main trimmer cap but this is still significantly better than before and if I have time I will probably tink, uh, tinker a little bit to see if I can trim off the extra 20 or so hertz but for a TCXO this should be more than uh, good enough so again let's uh, use a signal generator to spot check a few frequencies and now I just uh, powered on that 8642B again and uh, for some reference let's uh, use that 80 uh, sorry 5350B to get a re readout of the 100 megahertz frequency right now so right now we're reading about 100 megahertz and 5 uh, 173 odd hertz and because of the uh, uh, these clocks are not synchronized so uh, that's a uh, give or take uh, the uh, the tolerance right now I have now let me measure the same 100 megahertz signal using the uh, Keith Lee 775a that I just uh, uh, repaired and uh, let me just uh, focus on the 775A and uh, let's uh, hook it up straight to channel A and we're measuring a little bit higher than uh, than what we did with the uh, uh, HP 5350B but it's very close so that's pretty good and now let's uh, try channel C and again we're gonna we're gonna ramp up the signal so that uh, we can see that uh, after we fixed it if we were able to measure it all the way up. So now it's at 100 megahertz and uh, let's do 200. 200 megahertz. And we're 200 megahertz. So let's do 500 megahertz. 500. No problem. Now let's do one gigahertz. no problem at all and again we're gonna do 1.3 gigahertz so it cut out a little bit now let's increase the uh, amplitude let's do a 5 dBm and it should measure with no problem and now it seems that everything is fixed and I hope you liked the video and uh, enjoyed the uh, troubleshooting and repair process. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe and share. And I will catch up with you next time.